We continue our deep dive into the careers of the S.H.I.E.L.D. Now fractured and going their own separate ways, they are still linked together and are still regarded as some of the top stars in all of wrestling. And even in 2023, they take the top three spots on the PWI 500. Picking up after WrestleMania 31, Seth Rollins continued his work as a top villain, paying off beautifully. He started his reign as WWE Champion. The reign was long, but Rollins was booked sort of as a chicken shiz champion. Yes, one who barely survived challengers and used every cheating, nefarious tactic to get through it. His former friend turned enemy, Dean Ambrose, again got a chance at retribution on Rollins. He faced Seth that year for the WWE title. This told fans that he was ready for the main event scene, but WWE missed a chance with him as he did not get the title. Yes, Rollins got away with it again. Rollins delivered banger match after banger match as champion, even though he defeated John Cena at SummerSlam, becoming the only person to hold the WWE World title and the United States Championship at the same time. Yeah, remember John Cena's open challenge? That ended when Rollins ruined it. Reigns, on the other hand, was constantly on the hunt for the championship he was booked to dethrone Rollins for the title at Survivor Series. But unfortunately, Seth suffered a torn ACL-MCL knee injury and had to relinquish the title. And after this, there was practically two guys who could be the next champion. And yes, they were in the shield, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose. And despite Dean having the fan support, WWE chose Roman, and he won the vacant WWE World title at Survivor Series. But Triple H, with all of his nefarious, evil executive powers as the leader of the authority, executed his master plan by allowing then Mr. Money in the Bank to cash in his contract, screwing Reigns. Fans did not care, as it was seen as a cheap imitation of Daniel Bryan's Road to the Top, only having the Road to the Top pulled out from underneath his feet angle which happened two years earlier. Roman was not Daniel Bryan. He was the hand-picked on a pedestal guy who fans just felt was shoved down their throats. If you were a male, 18 to 34. If you were a woman or a kid, Roman Reigns was the, you know, real life He-Man action hero you were getting on board with. But no matter how much fans, some fans resisted, WWE kept on with Roman Reigns. Triple H had enough and he was going to put his foot down and the King of Kings was going to rule the ring once again. Winning the WWE Championship where the title was up for grabs in the big 30-man match at Royal Rumble 2016, taking the role of putting Reigns over himself heading into that year's WrestleMania. Dean Ambrose was getting a little impatient for the championship himself, and after having a long run as the WWE Intercontinental Champion, he began to bounce back into the main event scene. The final man eliminated from that year's Royal Rumble was Ambrose. Following this, he started a feud with Brock Lesnar, the Beast. Now this was pretty cool, when Ambrose, a lunatic crazy character who is a glutton for punishment, first interacted with Lesnar, fans felt that it could be something good. Dean got killed week after week, but his determination of not giving up created a really interesting dynamic. The match at WrestleMania 32 was supposed to be no holds barred street fight, with the likes of the great Hall of Famers like Terry Funk and others influencing Dean to get hardcore with the Beast and bring out his violent side, which he was famous for in the independent scene before WWE. But it turned to be a little disappointing as Lesnar ended the match with just one F5 and Ambrose reportedly was not happy about this, sharing his frustrations on Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions, saying that Lesnar did not want anything to do with that night. Yeah, this is Lesnar. Sometimes he's Lesnar. It's pretty weird when you step over a WrestleMania main event, especially one that saw the momentous big dog winning the WWE Championship. Roman Reigns taking it from Triple H. Yes, getting his hand raised by the real head of the company at the time, who is still an in-ring performer at WrestleMania. It means so much, but fans just didn't buy into it, at least not all of them. And they were still feeling it as AJ Styles challenged Reigns for the title at Payback and Extreme Rules. Great matches, but people still picked their sides. If 
If you loved Roman Reigns, you were cheering for him. But if you were a male fan, you were likely booing him. And the story continued with Seth returning at Extreme Rules by attacking Reigns. He wanted to reclaim the title, which he never lost. And this time, fans were behind him. Naturally. You know, distance makes the heart grow fonder while the knee heals. Though he was getting cheered, for some odd reason, WWE still wanted him to play heel, which makes sense. You know, Rollins was a damn good villain and easy to boo, but people were just excited to see him back. He was set to challenge Reigns for the championship at Money in the Bank. WWE presented it as a big match worthy of a WrestleMania main event, and the story writes itself. Two years ago, Rollins turned on Reigns. One year ago, WrestleMania, he stole the championship. It certainly has all of the buildup, and the match felt like a big deal. Up until this point, Seth was a champion. Roman was a champion. But Dean, he was still waiting for that first world title. And he got a chance to compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match to get that cash-in-anywhere-you-want title shot. And all he wanted was a legit chance. And this time, he managed to unhook the briefcase and win the contract. On the same night, Roman fought tooth and nail to keep his championship, but eventually lost to Rollins in a spectacular match. Seth won fair and square. No authority shenanigans, no outside interference, a legit down-the-middle win. Roman was the protected guy, and having a legit win over him was huge for Rollins. But this was simply a brief moment. Yes, it was something you could only glance at, because the night was not over yet. Celebrating that title win, out came Dean Ambrose with that screeching guitar. Yeah, he came out successfully and cashed in his Money in the Bank contract, winning the WWE Championship for the first time. This was a wholesome night for all three of their careers. All three members of the Shield were WWE Champions on the same night. Now the focus was on Dean Ambrose and we were gonna get something special WWE felt fresh, we got Ambrose defending the WWE world title against Roman and Seth in a triple threat match. This sounds like a WrestleMania match, but for some reason, WWE put it together on a random pay-per-view battleground, but hey, it's still on pay-per-view, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, we all know the reason the brand split happened. Roman and Seth were sent to Raw while Dean was drafted to SmackDown with the WWE Championship. Raw had one chance to get the championship back over to the flagship show, and it was win with either Roman or Seth at the Battleground show. Roman was suspended around this time for violating the wellness policy, so the entire story was focused on Dean and Seth. Reigns returned on Battleground hoping to win the title, but he couldn't, and neither could Seth. Dean retained the championship, and uh, really, in retrospect, that was pretty much a good decision. Dean struggled among all three of the S.H.I.E.L.D. members with his title reign, and some people really don't remember it fondly, so he deserved to get the win over all of them in retrospect. Dean continued to reign on on SmackDown. Roman captured the United States Championship, and Seth unsuccessfully fought for the inaugural Universal Championship against Finn Balor at SummerSlam. This was a time when WWE introduced new stars and brought up the ranks of AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, and Finn Balor, and they were seen as the next big guys in WWE. The company pushed them. Styles dethroned Ambrose for the WWE Championship. Finn defeated Roman on Raw in his debut and went on to beat Seth for the Universal title. And KO defeated both Seth and Roman in a fatal four-way match to win the Universal Championship which Finn had to relinquish due to injury. Still, the three members of S.H.I.E.L.D. were involved in the main event scene for their respective brands. Around this time, Rollins started to gradually turn face. Fans were getting behind him, and WWE recognized that. Ready to push Roman down our throats again? Uh, yeah, here we are. At Royal Rumble 2017, the big dog eliminated The Undertaker from the match, starting a feud with the dead man, and at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando, he did the unthinkable and became only the second man to defeat the Taker at the grandest stage of them all. This was done to solidify his place at the top of the mountain, but the heat he received afterward on Monday Night Raw was white hot. When he came out the next night to address the win, he couldn't even talk for what felt like 15 minutes. The boos were loud. The crowd loved the Taker, and this crowd, which was male-heavy, yes, on a night after WrestleMania, simply was not with the big dog. Roman simply stood in the ring, took all the hate, and after the crowd was done, he simply said, this is my yard now. 
walked away. Damn, he might as well have said, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me! Yeah, except he wasn't saying that just yet. This showed out how effective he could be as a heel, but he just wasn't a heel yet. But WWE kept him as a babyface superhero and booked him in a feud with Braun Strowman, which was designed to give Reigns more sympathy and catapulted Strowman to the next level as a big monster. Seth Rollins, though, was a complete hero the fans could get behind, and he defeated his mentor, Triple H, at WrestleMania 33 in a very underrated match. He was slowly getting back to the main event level, and Dean, on the other hand, was sent to Raw as the reigning IC champion. WWE always gave him those IC titles whenever he wasn't in the main event. Not a bad spot to be in, but he eventually lost it to The Miz. Roman was still being pushed as the guy, but Seth and Dean were kind of not exactly in a prime direction, and now all three members of The Shield were in the same brand on Monday at Raw. It was a time for reunion, and it started with Dean and Seth when they were forced to work together in a tag team match. Rollins loved working with his former friend, but Ambrose was reluctant and wanted nothing to do with Seth. He made it clear that he would not team with the architect ever again. Yeah, I understand, you don't trust him, you know, from the past, the old getting hit in the back with a chair thing. But both of them found themselves facing common enemies in the form of Sheamus and Cesaro, who kept attacking them both separately. The turning point came during an episode of Money at Raw when Ambrose finally came out to the aid of Rollins and ran off Sheamus and Cesaro. Then they did that shield fist bump. Oh man, fist bump for the ages, signaling the official reunion of two thirds of the shield. Roman Reigns at the same time was involved in some huge matches, even defeating John Cena. Following this, The Miz started to pick a fight with the big dog and kept taunting him for Seth Dean Ambrose reunion, and then it finally happened on Raw, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins all joined forces once again to beat the hell out of Miz and the Miz Starage. After three long years, the Shield finally reunited. Miz knew that he couldn't beat them on his own, so he recruited Sheamus, Cesaro, and Braun Strowman along with Kane to fight the Shield. Everyone had some issues with at least one member of the Shield at some point, and it was announced that the Shield would go three on five against Miz, Sheamus Cesaro, Braun Strowman, and Kane at TLC. But unfortunately, Roman was pulled out of the card due to a viral infection. This was disappointing, as this was supposed to be the big return match for them. Yeah, they were going to put the tactical vest back on. The match still happened, with Roman being replaced by general manager of Raw, Kurt Angle, who was great to see without Roman's involvement. It was a fun moment, and it seemed like Kurt was having a good time playing the part of Roman. Soon, Reigns returned as the Hounds of Justice finally got their match at Survivor Series against The New Day. But this reunion didn't last long, as Ambrose suffered an injury and had to take time off. Reigns and Rollins once again went their separate ways, with Reigns facing Lesnar for the second time in the main event of WrestleMania 34 for the Universal Championship, while Seth challenged for the Intercontinental Championship at the Show of Shows, and he managed to win the title for the first time in his career. But Reigns was not successful and got battered in New Orleans in a clean loss to Brock Lesnar. Yes, the Boo Birds that don't like Roman Reigns were happy to see him either win or lose or just not be the guy, but he was still gonna be the guy, and for the next few months, he picked up some wins, and at SummerSlam, he finally defeated Brock Lesnar to win the WWE Championship. Seth, on the other hand, was putting on some of the best matches with the likes of Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. Dean Ambrose returned at SummerSlam to help his friend Seth keep his IC title. And just like that, they were back together. However, Reigns was being targeted from everywhere. Braun Strowman was about to cash in his Money in the Bank contract on Roman for the Universal title. And that's when Ambrose and Rollins came out to save their buddy. The Shield was back together. And this time, they had goals. Roman was the Universal Champion. Seth was the IC Champion. Dean was not a champion, and this was used by their enemies to turn Dean against the Shield. But they remained together, giving beatdowns to the likes of Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, and Braun Strowman. And then the unfortunate night came on October 22nd, 2018, when Roman Reigns came out and addressed the audience, saying, My real name is Joe, and I've been living with leukemia for 11 years. The crowd went silent as Roman continued to tell his story how he suffered from illness a decade ago, how he managed to come out stronger. He relinquished the title 
and the same crowd that may have been booing him the majority of his career for chanting, thank you, Roman. Seth and Dean came out to embrace him on the ramp as Roman walked out. This was one of the most emotional nights that WWE has ever had on television. Dean and Seth were supposed to challenge for the tag team championships that same night, and they managed to win the title, dedicating the win to their brother, Roman Reigns. But in a shocking turn of events, Dean Ambrose, on this same night, turned on Seth Rollins. What the hell? Oh my God! What the hell? Yeah, Ambrose's villainous turn was hinted weeks prior to this, but no one saw it coming on at least this night. And it was certainly controversial. Some people saying it was simply a tonal shift that was jarring. Ambrose was instantly becoming the biggest villain in the company, and this should have been his time to capitalize on that momentum. Fans were intrigued by what Dean would do next as he kept attacking Rollins, but on one episode of Raw, he talked about Roman's illness and delivered an insensitive promo saying, for what Roman did in the Shield, he has to answer to the man upstairs. This shocked everyone, and plenty of people thought it was in bad taste. Actually, Dean did not reportedly want to say all of the things that WWE had scripted for him. They made him do a lot of stupid things around this time. One week he was getting injected, the other week he was coming out with a gas mask. And from this point on, his shock and stock had diminished. He was just another bad guy saying bad guy things. WWE had a golden chance to make Ambrose into the type of villain that Roman Reigns would become years later, one that Rollins was already good at playing. But they managed to just really botch this one. He had a boring match with Seth Rollins. How do you have a boring match with Seth Rollins at TLC? It was clear that nobody wanted what they were doing with these characters, at least with Ambrose at the time. WWE would never see him again as the guy, and because of that, he made a big decision. Yeah, before we get to that, let's talk about Seth Rollins, who was constantly getting cheered after losing the icy title to Ambrose. He went on to win the Royal Rumble match in 2019. He had already proved he was one of the best wrestlers in the world, bell to bell, by putting on some of the greatest matches of the year. And now WWE finally gave him a chance to run into WrestleMania as the guy. 2019 was the year he challenged Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. And now let's get to Ambrose. Soon after the Royal Rumble, it was announced that Ambrose would not re-sign with WWE with his contract expiring right before WrestleMania. This was massive news at the time. Fans weren't happy to hear this. Some even thought it was just a storyline. And in the middle of all this chaos, Roman returned and announced that he was in remission, y'all, to a massive crowd reaction. And then he was instantly asking for a Shield reunion giving passionate speeches about life is short. But considering the recent rivalry, Dean and Seth were reluctant at first. And I get it, yeah, it makes sense. But if you've been watching WWE for a while, you must know that this is not how things work. When the tease is something that happens, you're likely gonna follow through with it. For the third and final time, The Shield reunited once more. And at Fastlane, they defeated Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. And this was done to give them one last run of The Shield, as Dean had already made his decision to walk away from WWE. It added this whole sense of, you need to see this now, because you may not see it ever again. Seth captured the WWE Universal Championship from Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 35 in the opening match. Yeah, I know, that was a controversial decision, but they definitely delivered a banger. Roman Reigns defeated Drew McIntyre, while Dean Ambrose wasn't even booked for his final mania. Yeah. Weeks later, The Shield had their final match in an event called The Shield's Final Chapter, where they again defeated Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre. And just like that, Dean Ambrose was gone from WWE, ending his eight-year-long run with the company where he became a household name. WWE had Roman Reigns in a bit of a holding program for a while, and the focus was on Seth Rollins as the top guy. The architect defended the WWE Universal Championship against various opponents, and Roman started a feud with money, 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 Shane McMahon. Dean's presence, though, was missing. And around this time, a new wrestling company was emerging outside of WWE with the billion dollar support of the owner of the NFL Jacksonville Jaguars, Tony Khan. 
All Elite Wrestling. How this started and became an alternative to WWE that is truly game-changing is a different story, but this gave a chance to many wrestlers to feature violent, grisly matches that weren't really seen in WWE at the time. And on AEW's first Double or Nothing pay-per-view, Dean Ambrose emerged from the crowd, now called by a name he had used before WWE, John Moxley. He came out and destroyed critical darling Kenny Omega and started feuding with him. He even began wrestling on the independent circuit and going to New Japan Pro Wrestling to participate in the G1 Climax Tournament, which is one of the biggest feats accomplished in pro wrestling. Moxley was doing what Moxley wanted to do. Meanwhile, back in WWE, Seth was still on top, but it was starting not to work. Fans started turning on him because of the insensitive tweets he made about those independent wrestlers and how much he was just defending the company and, and maybe some of his, his criticisms of John Moxley. And we used to like him, but we don't like him because we're on the internet and whatever the internet tells us to do, we just do. And then he started to feud with someone that fans were really getting behind. A fresh look at a monstrous new character, the fiend Bray Wyatt. This was once again timing, the guy that everyone was turning on to and the guy that everyone was turning against. This was again a different story on how Bray created a character that was simply so monstrous, so feared, it was hard to have a convincing match with said character and Rollins didn't benefit from it. Remember that whole Hell in a Cell match which ended in a no contest? After this, Seth's character became extremely hard to like, but one that certainly provoked a reaction. And he soon dropped the title to Bray in Saudi Arabia and turned to a villain who embraced those boos again. Roman was facing losses like never before. Even the likes of Shane McMahon and Baron Corbin pinned him on various occasions around this time. But it was a matter of time before WWE once again pushed him to the top. He was booked to face Goldberg for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania 36. In the meantime, in AEW, Moxley had already become the top guy, dethroning Chris Jericho to become the AEW World Champion. This is when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, and a lot of things changed in wrestling. First, Roman decided to go home, saying that with his previous health issues, a match with Goldberg at this time in the early days of the pandemic was a risk he didn't want to take. Mox continued his world title reign in front of empty crowds, and after working for a few months, Seth decided to go home after becoming a father. SummerSlam 2020, the most important day during the COVID era. This was a day when Roman Reigns returned out of the blue and changed everything. He brutally attacked The Fiend and Braun Strowman to tell everyone he was back. He then, out of nowhere, became a Paul Heyman guy turning villainous for the first time in his WWE career on the main roster as a single superstar. And just a week later, at Payback, he solidified this turn by winning the WWE Universal Championship from The Fiend. The way he had won it, unlike the big dog, this dog had a different bite. This was a different character for Roman. A heel turn that they had waited for for years was coming, and the fans that booed him we're suddenly going to be watching every single week to see what the Darth Vader of WWE was going to do next. Roman was frustrated with the whole big dog thing. That was done. No thank you, sir. We all reevaluated things during the pandemic, and so did Roman. WWE finally allowed him to be the real bad guy. He gave him a whole lot of creative influence over the new direction of his character with Paul Heyman involved. He became the tribal chief. A few months later, Seth returned and began doing what he does best, having some of the best matches in televised pro wrestling. He also developed a Joker-like character, laughing around and showing off his vicious side. Yes, ooh, a new illumination of his many, many colors. Mox in AEW kept giving us some of the most brutal matches in the world. Yes, matches that he likely could not do in WWE. And that's where we are today. After three long years, Roman is still the guy in WWE unifying the WWE and Universal Championships, holding it for more than a thousand days. That's unheard of. His time is on point right now. As Seth evolved into this new incarnation of his character with flashy outfits and still even flashier matches, he became more over. A new alteration to his theme music has made it the song that fans want to sing in every wrestling arena around the world. 
Moxley, on the other hand, had arguably the best run as an AEW champion in recent years, holding the title on three separate occasions, proving to Tony Khan and the others that he is still the MVP of the company. And his faction, the BCC, along with his former WWE partners and Brian Danielson, aka Daniel Bryan, do I have to tell you that? And Claudio Castagnoli, Cesaro, I have to tell you that. He gets to do what he loves most, pure wrestling violence. The road has been rocky for all three of them, and there's even some things we didn't touch on in this video. I know some of you are going to scream them in the comments, but all three of them are exactly where they should be. Roman was destined to be this guy. Seth was destined to be this guy. John Moxley was always meant to be this crazy guy. Who is your favorite member of the Shield? Let us know with a fist bump, a like button, and uh, get into those comments below.